Welcome back to Arise Prime Time. I'm Charles Enyagolu, and I've got two guest analysts with me for the rest of the program to offer their perspectives on some of the talking points and what you might have heard on the show today. Professor Abiodun Adeniye is a current affairs analyst, professor of communications, and deputy dean of the postgraduate school at Bayes University in Abuja, and the journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku, is also here. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let me come to you first, Prof. Um, we heard from Alan Onyema, who is the CEO of uh, Airpeace, uh, talking to us about bringing the Nigerian evacuees back. I mean, we can now say with confidence that they are on the flight, but a rather tortuous path to that flight. No doubt. We're on a authoritative account of what has been happening, you know, and of course, um, very insightful penetrating again for us to hear uh, from the horse's mouth and from everything he said um, it's just a reflection of some of the right things with this country and some of the wrong things as well mm. because from his um, pronouncement we had that we can design that in this country sometimes we see villains you know being rewarded and we see supposed sense being punished in this country as well we see how we are regarded outside the shores of this country uh, even fellow African countries you know, on the minors in terms of reputation, in terms of respectability, and in terms of the way they see us. And of course, in this country, as we, from his um, interview as well, we saw how we do not really consider matters around health and safety, how sensitive facility like the airport can be infiltrated, you know, just on account of protest. Nobody's saying we cannot protest, you know, but, the, but there are cordons, you know, there are restrictions, there are limits at the protestation. And of course, uh, coming at this time, when you are protesting a government official, against government official, you do not want private citizens, you know, to not be the ones that will bear the brunt. Right. Um, in him, we saw a patriot, no doubt, he might have his imperfections, but I saw a patriot, a nationalist, a committed a Nigerian, you know, who is deploring um, his resources, you know, available to him, his facilities mm. available to him to help out fellow citizens in their needs, right. as the case could be. And I think government, like you said in the closing part of your interview, that government should intervene, you know, on his behalf, mm. you know, so that he can recoup some of the losses he has made. And this man has been consistent, really, in doing this. Remember what he did in South Africa and in Ukraine, too, he intervened. Now in um, in, in a, Egypt, in yeah, yeah, and other places. I mean, so I mean, it yeah. deserves some. Um, some no, absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. And uh, Dr. Ikoku, um, he, he talked about having gone through this experience. Um, he talked about ways to improve Nigeria's evacuation strategy. I wonder what your assessment of that is. I mean, it was very enlightening listening to him. Sometimes when you hear the stories of wars breaking out. Um, and what the chat that goes on on social media, it seems that it's straightforward because nobody really explains what is going on on ground to you. And here is this man today. It's very good he did that interview mm. because now you get a better picture of how complicated and risky this evacuation process is. He talks about planes, you know, a possibility that planes could be shut down. Absolutely. Um, so it's a risk for his, uh, for his uh, company, for his uh, flight crew, and so many other people that are involved. Uh, so well done to him and what he has done, yes. He is also very mild in trying to talk about um, the, the officials, the, the, the embassy officials, and everybody that is involved, and I can understand that. I mean, like our Prof said, he is a consistent man, has been consistent mm. uh, in, uh, in, in being passionate and trying to help out Nigerians and trying to provide jobs. And I hope that he gets some kind of reward because he's doing this at his cost. You know, but you know, broadly, I think well, where my mind went was the whole regional instability that is going on, not only in that region and what this means for Africa, the, you know, the explosion of Sudan. I mean, you have refugees now flying left, right, and center. Egypt has its own problems. Neighboring right. countries like Libya, um, Eritrea, Ethiopia is already at war. Um, and then you come to Chad, it's the same thing. They are either mid-level conflict, low-level, or uh, some form of insurgency. And this does not bode well for Africa. Yeah. But no, outside that region as well, the whole of the continent, there are so many conflicts going on. So I wonder um, what needs to be done. The African Union 
obviously needs to step up. Yes, the U.S. and foreign countries are intervening and asking these two um, generals that are at war with each other. Of course, there is the, the, there is the internal dimension. There is also an international dimension right. to what is okay. going on in Sudan. So um, we hope for the best, and, and, and uh, I hope that the Nigerians sure. have been evacuated return safely. Well, let's move on, because we've got less than a couple of minutes. So if we could mm. be a little bit pithy in our answers, yeah, yeah, just fairly right. brief. Um, the, we, we had Al-Hassan Dagua, who was the majority leader in the House of Reps. He wants to be Speaker, but he's got a case of culpable homicide in court against him. Do you think he should reserve his ambition and wait for the case to be concluded before he starts running for the position of Speaker? <laughs> That's, that's very, 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 I'm sorry, I just found it very amusing because it looks very personal and I don't want to talk, uh, no, around, it's, it's I don't want to talk personal. about personalities. It's, really, it's about the yeah, ethics. Yeah, I, I, I'm building it, I'm building the trade. Yeah. But I don't mean, I'm not really talking about personalities, but essentially, um, Charles, it also speaks to, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an epitome of what we've been seeing in this country in past years, you know, where people are, don't mind their personal um, histories, you know, their personal um, disreputation or right. reputation as the case could be, um, they have personal encumbrances. They shove it aside and say, yes, they've not been pronounced guilty by any court. So against that background, they can seek for public office. You know, it's, it's something that is, we've been seeing around. Absolutely. It's, it's, not, it's not going to be the first in this country, even though we know that it's not the ideal. You know, so Bob, I'm not surprised that he's running. Mm. I mean, I'm not so, going to be surprised as well. Um, if he emerges, but I, I don't know. I don't yeah. because I know there are some other much more potent candidates. You know, from the North Central, I know of Yusuf Adamugadi, for instance, young, vibrant candidate, and some other ones are also there as well. You know, but directly to your question, it's not an ideal thing. You know, but, but how happens. many po politicians, right? You know, will you see okay. have what we call shame I, 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 in this country? You know, just a, not a handful of them. I don't but want again, to that, That's why we keep saying yeah. that the handful of them that have shame, you know, we need that number to, to be ratcheted yes. up, to be increased well, that's a very for good the good point. of the system. A final yeah. word from you on that point. We've got about 10 seconds. Well, um, I think politicians should think more about the people they're about to serve and not their political uh, interest. Um, there should be um, not political expediency, something that is convenient for them. They should think more about the nation at large. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Constance, uh, Dr. Constance Ikoku, and of course, uh, Professor Abiodun Adeni. Thank you very much indeed. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos. Bye bye, and thank you for watching.